Yeah, good point there. I've, it's just occurred to me that we we kind of alluded to very quickly about pre-election seasonality. We're going into stocks are typically weaker in September compared to even August. So, you know, weaker PMIs, possibly a more hawkish Fed, all the narratives we just spoke about. And if history suggests that this is going to be the case, then do you expect more sloppiness going into September, possibly even October? Yeah, so and, and so seasonality is interesting, right? And I tend to think of it as sort of your base case, right? The season, seasonal trends tell you average movements and the tendencies that tend to play out, which are pretty well documented and they're and they're pretty consistent, right? I mean, there there are just there are times of the year which tend to be stronger or weaker. Um, in a pre-election year, after a midterm election year that has followed the seasonality so well, I'm tending to think a lot more about the seasonal trends and focus on the reality there. In a midterm election year like 2022, you usually have a weak summer into a, a significant bottom in October, which is pretty much what we had last year, and then a nice rally into year end. In a pre-election year, the first half of the year actually tends to be quite strong, which we certainly mm -hmm. have seen so far in 23. Then the second half of the year actually tends to be a lot murkier, particularly after a strong August, you usually have a weak August and an even weaker September. So the yeah. fact that we've peaked in July and now started to weaken in August, it, it, it just, it's playing so brilliantly using mm -hmm. that pre-election year playbook. What you have to remember is the fourth quarter is where you usually have a nice, uh, a, a nice improvement. And so, you know, the average year is pretty strong going into uh, that holiday season and the pre-election year, no different. So the idea, sort of the base case that we would have a, a peak in the summer, June, July, a weaker August and September setting up a fall low and then a nice rally into year end, I think makes a ton of sense. The, the challenge I would say for an equity investor is where do we actually end up? And I don't. I wouldn't be surprised if August and September pull us down a bit. I mean, S and P forty two hundred is kind of that the downside target that I'm I'm focusing on for here. I don't think that's an unreasonable target given the the deterioration we've seen. That'd be sort of a continuation yeah. of the move we've seen so far, and maybe a parallel drop to what we've seen so far in August. Mm -hmm. um, but that could set us up for a really nice rally into year end. I, I wouldn't. I don't know if we necessarily would make new highs, but I think we'd probably mm -hmm. finish the year in a position of strength. So tactically thinking of your portfolio between now and year end, I think that's a good sort of uh, you know, framework to, uh, to consider for sure.